Chicago Library Facility passed through a series of locations between 1959 to 2000. Today, the library is now located at Gardenside Street and officially opened its doors to the public in February 2015. This modern facility comprised the latest technology to meet the research and the developmental needs of persons of all ages. Stay with us to see where we venture first. I'm Omadara Mills, and Let's Talk Tobago starts now. Details on the financing options for the 2016 to 2017 budget. Highlights of the face-to-face -face community meeting at Plymouth Golden Lane. And later, insight on the courtesy call for Beach RC Primary School. These stories and more when Let's Talk Tobago continues. Hey, why don't you step into the Scarborough Library facility? It has all the knowledge of our land, people and heritage that you just won't find online. The Scarborough Library facility is now open. Tobago Library Services. Information inspires innovation. This amphitheater is a place for expression and entertainment and is open to the public. It's located near the library's entrance. Let's take a step away from entertainment and focus more on the financial decisions which impact the island. The 2017 budget was drafted, taking into consideration the country's economic situation. As a result, a few financial options are being considered for the fiscal 2017 period. Take a look at this story. The new administrative complex for the Division of Agriculture, Marine Affairs, Marketing and the Environment has been made possible through the public-private partnership financing model. This is where business ventures are funded and operated through collaboration with the public sector, in this case the THE, and one or more private sector companies. Projects being considered for this model include a cargo port, sporting facilities and hotels. This Tobago House of Assembly administration is committed to pursuing this endeavor with a keen awareness of the long-term impact on debt or contingent liabilities. Over the next year, we will see the integration of our PPP management in the overall public investment, public sector investment process. Bond financing is another avenue for funding the island's development program for the next year to the tune of $2.03 billion. The money is obtained by selling bonds to investors with the promise to repay with interest at specific times. We have begun the process with the relevant financial institutions to use bond financing in fiscal 2070. We are optimistic given our recent discussions with the Minister of Finance, the current economic climate and the ongoing discussions regarding internal self-government for Tobago, that this will be a viable alternative financing option to fund capital expenditure. Of course, the island resources can also bring in revenue. For example, the Studley Park Quarry is being restructured to generate more income. Over the next fiscal year, the Studley Park Quarry will undergo a strategic review exercise with an aim to create greater efficiency and output. These changes will culminate in a more market-efficient entity that delivers on its strategic object, objectives and meets its capacity and meet its capacity for profitability. The THE also aims to set up a Tobago saving fund to prepare for the years ahead. It's a measure that will widen future funding prospects. I'm Marlon Gutzleben for Let's Talk Tobago. This is known as the planter area where the library visitors can come and relax and have a little snack as eating is prohibited in the facility. Now customer service delivery is about to take a turn for the better as members of the Maxi and the Taxi Association are making it their business to provide value for the money you spend. Julia James has the details. Being on time, reliable, courteous and friendly and providing value for money. Those are just some of the ideals are listed in a charter created by the Maxi and Taxi Associations in Tobago. 
The charter is aimed at guiding tourism transport providers to improve the level of service to local and visiting customers. Courses on developing charters are very important. It sharpens you and it sends a good image right here in Tobago and in the wider world. I guess it's important to brush up on skills always to ensure that we are always professional and customer focused and driven. Um, what we are hoping that would come out of this charter really is a unification so that everybody on the island is on the same level. Tourism transport providers are not only expected to take their customers around the island, they must also be familiar with the destination. Taxi operators believe this is a critical part of the visitor experience. As a taxi driver of the island, you're supposed to know your country, your island. In order, sometimes people may not know where they want to go, but they just want to go somewhere. And you would be able to at least choose some place nice where they can at least enjoy Tobago, that when they go back, they at least would return and would tell others about Tobago. The charter has so far been agreed to by 120 taxi and maxi operators. The president of the Maxi and Taxi Association wants to have more drivers join the island's associations to ensure a consistent high standard of service across the island. When you come into the association, you, you, you sort of adhere to the rules of the association. Your dress will be different, your speech will be different, your department will be different. Because remember, you are selling a destination, you are projecting Tobago to the wider community. So it's very important. The Tourism Transport Operators Charter is an initiative of the Division of Tourism and Transportation in collaboration with TDC's A Small Tourism Enterprises Project. From the Division of Tourism and Transportation, I'm Juliet James for Let's Talk Tobago. This library has three floors with sections named after famous Tobagonians who contributed to the development of the island. Anne Mitchell Gift was instrumental in improving Tobago's library services in ensuring that it met the demands of this information and technological age. Additionally, this spacious auditorium caters to a variety of events and is available for rent. It also comes with a fully equipped male and a female dressing room. The Division of Finance and Enterprise Development hosted a three-day seminar aimed at helping project managers measure results. This is to ensure their professional skills at the THA is improved. Crystal George has this report. Employees of the Tobago House of Assembly who are involved in development projects now have information to manage those projects with greater focus and measuring results. They gained the knowledge at a three-day seminar hosted by the Division of Finance and Enterprise Development in collaboration with the Caribbean Development Bank, CDB. Working towards um, developing MSMEs in, in Tobago. The participants will be provided with relevant tools and methodologies to design and implement projects more effectively and projects that are more results focused. Areas covered at the seminar included shareholder stakeholder analysis, problem analysis, objectives and option analysis, risk management, work and resource planning, and gender specific considerations. The participants also have the opportunity to create their own results oriented projects. It's managing for development results. So you have a project. We go through the various steps in terms of ensuring that that project is viable, it is profitable, it is sustainable. So we will have, for example, like your stakeholder analysis. Who do you engage to ensure that your project is effective? So all the relevant stakeholders. We look at risk analysis. What are the various risks that is involved in executing this project? Then we looked at monitoring and evaluating. It is expected that this model of managing projects will be adopted across the THS divisions to ensure efficiency and effectiveness in operations. As a loans officer, we deal with loans and grants for the division. So a lot of project imp implementation is involved. And this workshop here will directly impact that in helping us assist SMEs with that regard in terms of building their businesses 
um, helping them with the project management aspect and by extension the profitability of their business. A follow-up exercise will be carried out to ensure the tools that were taught are being implemented in the assembly. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. Details on the face-to-face -face community meeting after this short break. Let's Talk Tobago will be right back. Adults Library is equipped with a study area and a lounge room. From the lounge room, visitors have a view of the botanical gardens and the sprawling artwork on the wall of Garden Side Street. Now the face-to-face -face community series is on again, and this week it takes us to the Plymouth Golden Lane district. Residents to use this opportunity to express their concerns to their area representative. Let's hear about some of the issues residents brought to the fore. Self-help, a community facility, and an item on traffic were among the concerns raised by members of the Plymouth Golden Lane Electoral District at the latest THA face-to-face -face community meeting. This resident had a unique request. That estate that we always have with eyes on and we have conversation over a period of time and you will gain battle with it and what have you. Give me where that is as you sit so that we, the villagers, might even make a contribution of assisting whether we put the money towards it as little as we are and you put the rest and we own that place for the future people of Golden Lane, Mount Thomas and Cologne. It's a legal position. We have done all that we can do, which is that when it came onto the market, we made a bid which was accepted by the bank. We made a down payment which the bank still has. But what the, the original purchasers would have done is that they have appealed the judge's decision. And if that ruling goes against the bank, it will go against us and we'll be unable to purchase. Another villager wanted some assistance with the very venue that the meeting was held, the Golden Lane Community Centre. A sore point for us in Golden Lane is this community centre. We sat here this afternoon and a lot of people had to be doing this because the fans aren't working, they're archaic, they're full of dust, and they're just not functioning. The contractor, I think, came to us and said that the whole roof needed to change. At that point, we had to, the administrator had to put a hold on it in terms of completing because they didn't have the resources, plus she needed to check into uh, why that was not part of the scope of works at the time. Since then, we have had a challenge with the resources, and we are hoping that within the next financial year, which would be in September, that we will have the resources in that vote to complete the, um, the center. We are always encouraged to take precautions on the road, and Ms. Bacchus wants to ensure the prospect of an accident in her district are minimized. We are asking if we could get two traffic mirrors, one at the junction at Golden Lane, on the turn to go to Mount Thomas, because sometimes cars come down from Mount Thomas and cars coming out from the old ground trace road, and it could cause a serious accident. We will have again the engineers come out and do an assessment, and through the traffic management committee, because we have already approved to purchase mirrors for a number of areas. We will look at those areas as to whether they are suitable for that and we, we would basically add them to the list. The community meeting series is helping to bridge the gap between residents and the air representatives and foster collaborations between them. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. The Young Adults Library is often filled with students from the secondary and the tertiary levels who come to do research. We stick with the topics of youths and education. As we see in this next story, the Trinidad and the Tobago Police Service is educating the nation's youths on the ramifications of crime and violence. 
Here are the details. The mandate of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service is to protect and serve with pride. That's why officers are bringing awareness to schools around the country about crime. They held a forum at the Signal Hill Secondary School recently, and one senior officer says the police also have a social role in fighting crime. Our presence here this morning is not to tell you what to do, how to do it, but to work with you so that you can become better citizens, that you all can keep on the side of the law, that you all can turn out to be very productive citizens when you leave school. There is so a wealth of information that you all are exposed to on social media, on the internet. But yet we are seeing where young people are choosing the negative to highlight out there. Motivational speaker for the forum, Mr. Wayne Chance, is advising the youth to ensure they have a vision for their lives and to stick with it, even when the going gets tough. You must know where you want to go from today. Even though you don't have the full picture, you must have a sense of what you want to be and begin to shape it in every aspect of your life. You must have a vision of your future. Mr. Chance says people, especially the nation's youth, should not let where they come from determine how successful they become. And we have a lot of young people defining the future on the current circumstance. And I was once a young man who was in that same position. But I've come to realize that is not where you are, not from where you are starting from, will determine how you end. It's hoped the initiative will be a source of inspiration for the island's youth and help them to stay on the right path. I'm Kuhn De Freitas for Let's Talk Tobago. This is the Eastland Mackenzie Children's Library and is located on the ground floor of the Scarborough Library facility. Dr. Mackenzie is recognized for her work in community development and the performing arts. This storytelling room is where the imagination comes to life. Now for a more adult topic. Mitigating the effects of the economic downturn is being discussed as the Tobago House of Assembly and the central government create a plan to strengthen the nation. Here's more in this story. Finding solutions to the economic challenges facing Trinidad and Tobago takes a collaborative effort. Discussions between the Ministry of Social Development and Family Planning and the Division of Health and Social Services looked at the social repercussions for those living in Trinidad and Tobago and ways to minimize its efforts. These dialogues are entitled Towards a National Social Mitigation Plan, Building Resilience to Secure Our Nation. The event is really an important one because it's part of the journey toward the development of a first-of-its-kind plan to mitigate against and cushion the effects of the economic downturn. The talks were also an opportunity to share some of the social initiatives to assist those in need. This evening is really to share with you some of the things that we have been doing in trying to mitigate the economic downturn here in Tobago. We have focused on families. We feel that family development is very important at this time to nurture families. As we know, the foundation of any structure determines how well it holds up, in this case, families. That's why the Division of Health and Social Services wants to ensure the social impact of the downturn is managed well and early. We do have our community social workers who go out into the community and give support to families out there. And with the primary health care program of Healthy Homes, Healthy Families, 
They go door to door in selected areas in dealing with uh, prevention of ill health. This was the second consultation session held in Tobago. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. Coming up, courtesy call with some youngsters from the Beach RC Primary School. Don't move, we'll be right back. Going to Barbados? Why continue to pay high prices when you can get there for only US $231.95, all taxes included? Yes, you heard right. You can now travel to Barbados from Tobago for a mere US $231.95 on Gold's weekly service. So if you're going to Barbados for business, the beach, crop over, or attending university, stop wasting your money on those other high-priced airlines and get there for a fraction of the cost. To book, just log on to www.vogue.com. Google.com.br. Barbados just got closer. Located right here on the second floor is the Susan Craig James Heritage Library. Dr. James is a historian and a sociologist, and this room, named in her honor, is filled with West Indian books from local and regional authors. We shift gears a little as a Trinidad school project brought students of standards four and five from Beach RC Primary School to Tobago. Their first stop was the office of the Chief Secretary, and they learned a bit about the job of the Chief Secretary and the functions of the Tobago House of Assembly. Here's more. Bright-eyed and eager to learn about Tobago's culture, their Social Studies Tourism Project brought 35 Standard 4 and 5 pupils from Beach RC Primary School to Tobago. They made their first stop at the office of the Chief Secretary. They told Chief Secretary over London that Beach is a quiet village in East Trinidad with a lot of trees, fruits and birds, similar to communities in Tobago. The students learned about Mr. London's job as Chief Secretary, how the THA functions and the relationship between the THA and central government. There is a talk about Tobago's autonomy. What is this about? All that is happening in the case of the Tobago House of Assembly, and that is all autonomy means, the right to within the national guidelines to be able to control your own destiny. And as I said, if you draw, draw the relationship between children growing up into adults and an island maturing, I think you will understand uh, basically what autonomy means. It was the first time that many of the youngsters have been to Tobago. But for 11-year-old Kila Babulal, it's her fourth such trip. Still. She was just as thrilled as her classmates to meet the chief secretary in person. I feel excited to meet him to get to learn about his um, authority and thing. The school's acting head of department, Ethelbert Schiller, also met Mr. London for the first time. He says that life experiences like these add greater value to the topics taught from textbooks. Social study is part of life. And, you know, coming to a place like here and visiting, doing it at school, as a topic and you know virtually coming here and visiting getting full sun experience i think we can do it as i said before we definitely could not some more as part of their one-day trip the group also visited fort king george fort james the mystery tombstone and the scarborough botanical gardens i'm kundi freitas for let's talk tobago this audio visual room is spacious in order to better cater for small events such as lectures and seminars you would also notice that the room is equipped with a wide range of computers. That's because the senior citizens class takes place here. Additionally, computers like these are on every floor for public use. You can even borrow a laptop once you have a library card. Now for a complete switch of topics. The Macho Man Workshop is an initiative which started in 2013 by the Division of Community Development and Culture. It aims to reshape the focus of the role of men in Tobago society. Beverly Edwards has this story. Who likes to party and be holy? Stay on the side. Yes. <laughs> Who likes church? Stay on the side. Ah. <laughs> 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 
In observance of Father's Day, the Division of Community Development and Culture hosted male staff members and schoolboys from both primary and secondary schools at its annual multifaceted, assertive, caring, healthy, outstanding macho program. The initiative which started in 2013 was held at the conference hall of the Division of Community Development and Culture Glen Road on Thursday, June 16th, just prior to Father's Day. Mentoring men's mentality was the theme for 2016. The speakers who came from different professional backgrounds spoke on various topics including etiquette and God's purpose for men. Motivational speaker Mr. Michael Stewart highlighted that in today's world, the roles of men and women have been a stark contrast to what existed prior. In today's scenario, the provision of the family seems to come now from the woman. So we have lost or direction. She owns more of the property. She's the one putting us out because she was paying the rent or she owns the house. Pastor of the Church of God's Seven Days Adventist, Raphael Mitchell, drew on biblical principles to highlight the importance and benefits of the family, which includes a husband and a wife. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Gentlemen, when we treat our wives well, they treat us well. And we protect the family. And once each family is protected, then society is protected. Motivational speaker Everett Phillips spoke about the topical issue of bullying. Bullies are made, not, uh, they're not born. No one is actually born a bully. And bullying is actually a manifestation. Very often it's a manifestation of other problems that the bully has. So how do we stop bullying? We have to be aware of the things that happen when people bully. That, that is like, for instance, teasing, name calling. These are the things that we have to stop. Tokens were presented to the speakers by community development officers. Also in attendance was Secretary of Community Development and Culture, Dr. Denise Soyafat Angas, and Assistant Secretary, Mr. Ansel Dennis. From the Division of Community Development and Culture, I am Beverly Edwards for Let's Talk Tobago. Name one precaution you can take to avoid being bitten by mosquitoes. That's this week's question. It's have your say time. And here are the responses a few of you gave us. One of the ways to avoid being bitten by the mosquitoes, you clothe yourself properly. You know, you look for long sleeve and maybe trousers and you try to avoid the dark color clothing. I would suggest that you keep a clean surroundings and um, you don't have um, stagnant water uncovered so that the mosquitoes would have no place to breathe. Using insect repellents could be a very good way of protecting yourself from getting bitten by mosquitoes. One should sleep under a mosquito net. Clean your gutterins. Gutterins are important because leaves normally fall, hook up, and once there's rainfall, that water to settle for days. And once that water settles settle for days, mosquitoes are going to breed. And Use insect repellent and sleep below a net in order to prevent mosquito from biting. I would suggest that you use a mosquito repellent. Check the waste drain and make sure that there is no water remaining after the waste drain off because that is a breeding ground for mosquitoes. And that is something we could, simple as that, could do to prevent mosquitoes from biting us. We close another edition of Let's Talk Tobago. And as always, we thank you for watching. Please email us with your comments or queries about the program and be sure to visit our website, like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. From our house to yours, I'm Omadara Mills, along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and a productive week. We close now with footage from the second International Day of Yoga.